Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day. Uh, I turned this drill day into a lot of fun for me. Uh, I used to love to do illustrations, drawings, character designs, and around 2005 I kind of gave it up, got busy with life, but you know, I've had this great opportunity to sort of reconnect with these old drawings and these old sketchbooks that I had, so uh, I scanned a few of them into Photoshop, and I've got this cool uh, tablet that helps me just draw right in place. So what I'm gonna do is some quick line art over the top of it, and just try and tighten up this artwork, and then uh, I'll, in part two of this video, I'll go back through and try and do a digital painting of it. So just give it some color and some life and vibrancy. And these are two skills that I'm not that good at. I'm really trying to get better at, so. Uh, I wouldn't take this as a tutorial. This is just me trying to learn how to do this kind of stuff. And at the end of it, I'm going to critique my work and things that I think I need to improve on. But I uh, just wanted to show you the process as I go through it because I'm bored. I bet you're bored too. Let's just uh, have some fun together. All right, starting out. Uh, that's always the hardest part. You don't quite know where to start. I, I figured I'd start with the mouth get these big gnarly teeth done it kind of sets the tone for me kind of how grotesque this creature is uh you can really tell in the mouth you don't want to be staring that down when you're uh <laughs> coming down a dark alley or something so i wanted to draw in some big floppy jowls and rotted teeth and uh, just a terrible maw to have to look into and um didn't quite know how to size everything yet but uh, i knew i wanted some drool so we got the drool uh big ugly nostrils and fleshy lips and the idea behind this creature is that uh it, the uh dude that sits on his back and holds his eyes open controls him and uh the uh large creature here he would sit mainly dormant until this guy lip lifts up the uh, flaps on his eyelids and at which point he turns into sort of a raging beast and uh, you can be barely controlled if you can see that sketch barely of the kind of umbilical cord coming out of the uh, top guy's stomach so i named him crudge and coagulot and i got the name coagulot from my buddy zeke back in college he uh was trying to name an axe actually like a, a axe out of fantasy and uh, came up with this cool name, Coagulot. And I actually did some axe designs for him. Um, I'll have to show this to you. Uh, actually, I think I flashed one up on the screen when I was showing some of those drawings. So that was the original Coagulot. But I stole the name, and I gave it to this character design. So <clears throat> Crudge is the guy on... Uh, which one was it? It was... Uh, yeah, it was Crudge on top, and Coagulot is this huge lumbering creature. So... Poor Coagulot, he basically sits there until Crudge lifts his eyelids up and sends him on a rampage. And uh, he controls him with that umbilical cord coming out of his stomach there. I always kind of saw that as feeding, like an intestine slash umbilical cord feeding motion information and control to the brain of Coagulot. And uh, I kind of wanted to go for, and just like a, I called it necrotech, I wanted to go for a a steampunk sort of zombie ethic or ideal, I guess, or aesthetic, I guess is the word. And um, as I'm drawing in Crudge's leg there, I realize, you know, it's kind of a mistake to hide body parts behind other things. So I wanted to correct off of the original illustration and kind of rough out a, a section for his leg there. And I, I really like showing that he's got these three little talons that just dig into Coagulot's flesh. And that's sort of how he holds on when Coagulot goes on a rampage. And I, I always see Coagulot as sort of a sad character. He's a thrall to this sadistic crudge, this guy that just controls him. He's basically, quite literally, the brains of the operation. And Coagulot is just stuck there doing whatever he tells him to do. So I went to go do a little bit more line art for Crudge. I gave him bigger ears than I had had before. I figured he needed sort of a salacious crumb kind of big ear, ugly look. And um, I started penciling him in. I get to the part where I'm looking at his crotch. I'm like, what actually goes here? What what would this character have? Uh, I don't want to make that decision right now. So I moved, <laughs> I moved off of the crotch shot over to uh, the 
What I wanted it to be was a weird atrophied arm that's barely being held on to coagula out there. You can kind of see that tear in the, the flesh there I'm start, starting to draw in. And here I experiment with a few different brushes, but I didn't like it. So I went back to the original kind of basic brush I'm using there. And the idea here is that coagulat is pieced together from a bunch of different creatures or different body parts that they could pull together. And he's sort of a Frankenstein monster that, uh, you know, like I said, just, <clears throat> just a sad character that's in pain constantly and controlled by others and only knows pain and only knows misery. So if you hear my uh, chair squeaking, that's me just moving because the cats are crawling all over. All right, back to it. So here we show um, Crudge's feet, his talons, just biting into Coagulat's flesh there. And I go in and just put in the joints and the, the other muscles that I can find. And I really thought of both of his arms as being not only sewed on, but also kept in place by these huge nails just spiked through his shoulder and into his torso, basically. And out, out of his back, I imagined the rest of the nail protrude, protruding, rather. So uh, here I just go in and I start drawing in the sutures that hold on the various body parts. And in this process, uh, I got pretty bored of it about... <laughs> A third of the way through so I started drawing other things that could potentially hold a body part in place big rings staples uh just stuff that you know just like this really slapdash surgical horror kind of experience that poor coagulat was birthed in in which coagulat was birthed I don't know what the proper language there is trying to draw in a little bit of muscle substructure there poking out as that flesh tear uh, grows and grows under strain of him freaking out. His sick little atrophied hand there. Uh, try a different suture design there. I didn't quite like it, so I went back to the original. I just got so bored of drawing those. Now I'm drawing in uh, fat. I basically uh, see that every day. I take my shirt off, so that was not hard to draw. And uh, now I just do these... Uh, muscle structures on the interior of the design. I'm kind of trying to avoid the detail of his big sledgehammer there with nails spiking out of it. So go back to doing the sutures and uh, these get pretty dull. I'll probably fast forward through them. <clears throat> but uh, drawing a few more rings and really trying to get the structure of this forearm here. There's a lot of muscles that flow and and uh, kind of overlap on a forearm, on a bicep, and it really is a, a fine detail part of the body that's deceptively difficult to draw for me anyway. And what I wanted here was kind of that steampunk thing coming out of his arm like a really controls the force, like the forward motion of this huge cl uh, bludgeon with these spikes coming out of it and kind of this steampunk hydraulic. I didn't quite know what the technology here was, but I just knew I wanted him part machine, part piece together, surgical horror show. And uh, this is kind of the direction I went with it. So I'm doing this cudgel and uh, all the nails coming out of it and I was trying to freehand it but then I realized, you know what, let's just draw it in with a proper shape here and see how that goes. And so I just draw out a circle and then I cut out the middle and um, just, try, just trying to give it a little better structure than what I f was able to freehand back in the day and uh, go back and erase some work that I did but... I think I'm happier with, you know, a, a, just a more round shape for this. I, I think uh, that might be the one thing they get right as a huge mace. And I decided to give it some deformations in the center later on. But, uh, I mean, the, the first shape I had was just wasn't quite working for me. So I guess you, you might say it's cheating because I'm going back and using um, the select tool to make my circle. But I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. Quit judging me. Anyway, 
I go back and I draw in these bent, misshapen nails. I guess I kind of wanted to be more like railroad spikes sticking out of this thing. I mean, if you caught the business end of this in the middle of one of Coagulot's rampages, you'd be feeling pretty bad. And so I wanted these to look mean and spiky, but, you know, not necessarily sharp. I wanted them to just be brutal, I guess was what I was going for. So, uh, I start drawing in a bunch of these railroad spikes. And, uh, you know, this is a somewhat tedious process having to go in and just draw the same thing over and over. So I try and give them, you know, different uh, directions, different configurations, and just let this thing look like it's been used on someone before, you know, like he's been on a few rampages in his day. And so I skip ahead a little just to fill out the, the rest of those nails coming out of his mace there, his hand mace. And then I go back over here to this stump of a leg. And I, again, I'm trying to freehand in some of these angles and shapes. And I kind of always thought of it as this big kind of pirate club leg that they just welded on and gave some weird suspension mechanism to it, uh, trying to keep it that steampunk theme. And so I wanted these kind of like apparatus that hydraulic apparatus coming out of his thigh there connecting his upper thigh to the rest of the device here and I, I figured this would be just in another crushing device that he uses in a basic rampage or that they'd run out of legs so this was the best they could come up with when constructing this poor creature and so uh, I go in with the selection tool just to draw a little bit uh, I would you know better circles and whatever than just the free hand which the danger of this is it can take you out of the aesthetic that i had before which was all free hand but uh you know i just want a more complete shape here because you know a lot of this structure a lot of it is going to actually come out in the painting later when i un when i lay under the uh the colors so Moving forward here, I just wanted to go in and create some small hydraulic substructures underneath this weird leg and uh, kind of make it look like a furthering of that suspension system. I could kind of see this as acting a bit like a piston as he really works up his rage and starts pounding around a room, trying to freehand in some structure, but I realize eh, it just looks a little chintzy next to the uh, selection tool lines that I'd drawn before. So I, I go ahead and create another selection here and try and draw it in or try and uh, transform it into a proper uh, perspective. It's a little hard to do uh, when you're just trying to eyeball it, but I'm trying to work fast here too. Uh, this doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, we are talking about a piece together creature here. So uh, and I go in and just draw some more of the leg structure and then erase out the stuff that I don't need. And uh, that's a real slick way of just kind of building precise mechanical things. Um, although I, I'm questioning the wisdom of freehanding some of this and using the selection tool for the rest of it. So that's something I'll have to figure out in the painting as well, whether or not I want to go through and just straighten up all of this or keep it as this sort of freehand aesthetic. And... Um, I kind of decided just to go freehand here, for better or worse. I just kind of wanted to get it done, get some detail in there, so that I uh, have some guidelines for when I go in and paint. Uh, a lot of this stuff is going to look a little less slapdash when um, I go in and do the final colors, because it's going to bring out a lot of the structure, a lot of what I had in mind. And I wanted this stump of a leg to just kind of be mean and evil in its own right, I, you know, maybe carved from big piece of driftwood and strapped with iron to keep its structure. And, you know, I just wanted every single inch of coagulat to be dangerous and dirty and evil and, and uh, just, you know, the type of creature that would do really well in sort of a fantasy comic book or movie to have the hero come across something this amongst an army of similarly disfigured creatures I thought would have been a lot of fun. And that was kind of the idea behind Crudge and Quagulet. I had a whole series of creatures designed 
uh, for a comic book series that I really wanted to do. So I had gotten busy doing the designs on the creatures, and I had always imagined our human protagonists having to wait uh, as this army of creatures like this approach them and just kind of the psychology of what it takes to stand and fight when this crests the hill and it's hollering at you and it just reeks of corpses and it's this horrible thing, you know, to have to stand there and take it and have to stand there and defend your home against the most horrible thing I could think of. Um, That was the psychology I really wanted to get into in that comic book. Kind of a Terrence Malick ideal. I don't know if you watch a lot of Terrence Malick movies. He really goes into the psychology of a person in the situations in which he puts them. So uh, as I zoom out on the picture, I realize, you know, I really want to bring out the exterior of this the the main structure so I go back and I thicken some of the line art this is something I have to get a lot better at is deciding how to you know what to thicken when why and uh, to pull out a lot more and not wait till the end to do this you know I really should be using variable line art throughout and not just be so zoomed in because as you can see in the leg area and when I pull out like some sections are really thin, other sections are really fleshed out. So I had to go back and um, put in the most important lines, the stuff I really wanted to stick out, the things that really give the structure. I gave it a thicker line. And I should almost make it thicker still. Uh, but, you know, this is still something I'm working on. Um, I've been watching a lot of tutorials myself on how to do this. So, like I said, I'm not that good at this part. You can tell when I pull away the underlying sketch that I really needed to go in and make sure some of this stuff stood out a little more. So uh, that's what I'm doing here and just trying to make sure that at a glance, if somebody sees this, they can pick up what I'm putting down, you know. So go in and putting in a lot of extra lines, uh, darkening a lot of the outline, I mean, really made some of those lines thin. And they look thick when you're zoomed in and you're trying to do detail work, but um, it's apparent to me I'll need to zoom out a little further. And also here, we, again, uh, missing the feet. I'm going to have to get that figured out. I can't have those feet missing. So, uh, But once I get the thicker line work done, I put a flesh colored backdrop on it because this is setting the tone for the painting that we're going to be doing later on. All right, that's it. Crudge and coagulat line art mostly done. I might touch it up a little bit. One thing I know I got to do is complete the feet. That's a major problem I always had in my old art is I'd start the project and the feet would always run off the page and I'd never complete them. And then if you don't practice feet, you don't get good at drawing them. So uh, I'm going to Go ahead and, in between videos here, complete that. But I just had to be done for the day. Um, but, uh, yeah, the next video is going to be the painting. It's going to come to life. It's going to be even meaner. going to be even uglier. I can't wait. So thanks for watching, and stick around for the next one. And uh, you all have a great night. Talk to you soon.